If you spend any time in the YouTube drama space, you're probably familiar with John Swan, or at least one of his many controversies. Once a promising creator and a golden boy of the commentary community, unfortunately, after a series of unfortunate circumstances and terrible life decisions, John became what he hated most, an internet cuck. From a seemingly complete lack of a backbone, questionable moral framework, to his sheer and utter narcissism, nothing will be left out. So join me as we explore the never-ending decline of John Swan. Since his early days on the platform, John had always been destined for greatness. Starting off with parodies and other content regarding internet culture, slowly building up a stable reputation as a creator. Even though John had gotten a mediocre amount of success at the beginning of his early career, it was clear that he wanted to do something bigger, and this insatiable hunger for more would soon be rewarded. He gained quite a bit of notoriety on YouTube in 2020 for being a bastion of justice, a seeker of truth, and an advocate for honesty. This was John Swan in his prime, respected by his peers and adored by the community. And for a split second in time, it seemed like nothing could come even close to toppling this rising star. That was until he lied and lied and lied. He was never and still isn't doing this for the right reasons, and in the next little while, we'll explore exactly why. John was certainly a very talented storyteller. His well-edited and thoroughly researched videos set him apart from other upcoming creators. He clearly spent much more time on his projects than most of his counterparts, and his videos were in return much harder to make, and uploads couldn't be made as frequently, but they would make up for this by possessing significantly higher production value, meaning they were easy to digest even when presented to a wide group of people that weren't necessarily familiar with the subject at hand. But John's arguably biggest strength was his marketability. The persona of a charismatic and upstanding journalist was set on putting the truth out there, was welcomed by audiences, and his family-friendly videos would make his content much more accepted by advertisers and YouTube alike. But this wasn't really John. He had put up a false facade that he couldn't keep up. But for the time being, John still managed to conceal his true colors from the public. You're probably more than familiar with the content creator Dream by now, and despite what response his name might invoke in you, it's clear that he's indubitably one of YouTube's most prolific stars, boasting a follower metric that can only be counted in the millions. He is, by any means, one of the most successful creators that this platform has ever produced, but success always comes bundled with attention, and in Dream's case, not all of it was positive. This drew John Swan's eye, and in his usual style, he recognized the potential of profiting off of the negative attention Dream was receiving. Soon, he and another creator combined their efforts and started the production on a documentary that was to finally hold Dream accountable once and for all. They would frequently update their audience on their findings about the controversial internet celebrity by sharing parts of their research on their respective Twitter accounts. But things didn't turn out as John had hoped. After Dream had noticed Swan's involvement with the hit piece, he brought up his prior history with John in response to a now infamous Reddit thread. 
John was accused of having trolled a smaller content creator by impersonating Dream after having worked on a project together. When Dream approached Swan about this, he blamed the trolling on a 12 year old autistic cousin who had, according to him, hacked into his accounts after he left his computer open while visiting family members. After being made aware of the Reddit comment, which only had about 20 efforts at the time, John was quick to deny these allegations, accusing Dream of trying to assassinate his character and reaffirmed his original story that he had told the internet star, shining the limelight onto the situation in the process. Luckily, his good reputation came in handy and John's YouTube colleagues tried their best to defend what they thought to be the truth. When I first met John, before I knew him, I received some messages from his account, which included a account that was called Dream. I cannot imagine for any reason John Swan trolling Dream in this manner, saying the N-word, saying this weird sexual stuff. I sent that to Dream because when I spoke to John and John clarified, I didn't believe him because it seemed like he was using an excuse. For Dream to not believe John's explanation is completely baffling to me. Like, what would be the motive behind John Swan even doing all of that? It just doesn't seem like something that would be in his character. John Swan has always been very professional around me. I don't believe that John is responsible for anything, okay? I believe that obviously it was probably someone else. So I don't hold John responsible, but I do hold myself partially responsible for what Dream believes now. Reading that story, it doesn't sound like the John Swan that I know. I, I do want to go ahead and stand up for him there because I just can't personally imagine him doing something like this. It it, he has no real motive to have done it either, I mean. Dude, John's a fucking violin kid, all right? He's got, he's got nothing. There's nothing on John. You can't, you can't pound him, all right? He vehemently refused having any involvement, even when asked in private, and it was clear that he was willing to fight this battle until the very end. Post by post, John continued digging himself a deeper and deeper hole, and the situation kept on snowballing until Dream attempted to put an end to the drama by booting up a stream in which he displayed the reasons as to why he heavily doubted that John's recount of the events were accurate. However, this live stream was by no means without flaws and Dream's response was littered with heavy speculation and at points even arguments that could be considered blatant misinformation, which reassured Dream's critics and strengthened John's platform who would hold off on responding to the stream for the following weeks, until he released an 18-page Google document with an accompanying audiobook in which Swan attempted to deconstruct and ultimately debunk Dream's points. Innocent until proven guilty. That is a phrase that has lost a lot of significance as of recent. It seems people disregard it entirely in favour of passing judgement based on circumstantial evidence. And at this point in time, it seemed like he could have genuinely come out on top. With Dream lacking any substantial evidence to corroborate his claims, John started to get cocky. But John wouldn't make it to the end of his victory lap. Not even a week after he had released the doc, a fellow small creator by the name of Nicholas Diario, who had managed to gather evidence that John had not been telling the truth and had in fact orchestrated the entire narrative Swan had built over the past year, confronted him in a recorded Discord call. I just want you to like 100% assure me, like there's no way that you could possibly be not telling me the entire truth. No, there's no way. I, it, it doesn't add up, dude. If you know the answer, then you know the answer. So you did it! That's what I'm gonna say. I, I, I... John, come on! I'm not... No, I'm not. I don't know. Who knows? If you know the answer, you know the answer. That's all. Are you, like, the slightest bit worried? No, not really. Do you think they don't have... No, Alright, wait. You think they don't have you saying it? They do. No, they do. No, they don't. No, they don't. Hey, John, it's not on his Twitter account. It's on his WhatsApp. Mm, no, I, 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 uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's not me that sent that. The kid sent it. I don't know who that is. John, this is crazy. I don't know who that was. John. I don't know who was that. I don't know. <sighs> But even after one of his closest associates had found out that he had used and blatantly lied to his friends, he still expected him to back up his story. It's just this is fucking... what the fuck, dude? 
Like, I don't understand why you have to bring this to the public. Right now? What do you mean? Like, I had no idea. I think you should have brought it to the public yeah. three weeks ago, and we could have totally skipped this out. Willie Mac Show is making a whole video about how I'm fucking biased or some shit, because I genuinely believe that you weren't feeding me lies for, like, a fucking week and a half, and I got into a screaming match with him. Like, this is, like literally driven like fucking divisions in my own fucking friendships with people online because I fucking trusted you. Shortly after leaving the call, John would release an admission of guilt to his Twitter. The following is an excerpt from John Swan's February 17th statement. Hello everyone. As a commentator, my credibility is important to me. Unfortunately, I have let you all down. There is no excuse for what I did and I take full responsibility. I wish I could have made a video, but I'm currently traveling and not in the position to do so. I was messing around on Discord about a year back with a friend of mine. I had 6k subs and I thought nothing of it, um, but this somehow got back to Dream and I didn't expect it to. I panicked, I told a lie I thought it would never get brought back up again, and I was wrong. This was the catalyst that ultimately brought down John Swan's reputation in the first place. However, most still believe the drama was so inconsequential that this couldn't be the final straw. Like, he had so many moments to get off this before it got to the point it was at. Uh, he could have, like, came forward before we even knew about it a year ago. Uh, before I was really even close to John. Uh, he could have came forward before he decided to make that huge Twitter thread. Uh, and I think we could have got that handled the right way. At one point, Dream reached out to John basically saying, like, I know you're lying. And um, I want to like make this, like, we can come out of this the best way possible, whatever. Like Dream even altered, like gave him an alt, uh, not an ultimatum, but like an offer to like come clean and stuff like that. But what everyone least expected was one of the ghosts of his past coming back to haunt him. Even though his behavior didn't seem outright indefensible, many creators rushed to talk about their experiences with the internet personality, ultimately burying John in an avalanche of controversy. Among them was a much smaller creator named Pie Man. Not too long before John got tied up in the dream situation, there had been an incident that received much less coverage, but is arguably much more significant to understand John Swan as a person. During the early December of 2020, pages of Twitter DM logs were leaked that displayed the small commentary YouTuber Pie Man interacting inappropriately with a 12 year old named I'm Alex Stan 69. They had originally lied about their age to the at the time 15 year old Pie Man claiming to be 13 years old. The small commentary community quickly erupted, rushing to burn Pie Man to the ground, with John Swan, someone Pie Man deeply respected and looked up to, being one of his biggest critics. His now ex friends almost immediately booted up a live stream, seemingly to profit off of the situation after dragging Pie Man on the air. A questionable choice in hindsight. However, if there's one thing John Swan loves more than lying, it's virtue signaling on live streams, and that's exactly what he proceeded to do. 